folks, triple arcade score battle. We are going to be doing something similar to last week where we have three games, 10 minutes each. We're going to take the score and add them up. Only one of the games is a little off there. It's like a tenth of the value of the other one, so we're going to multiply that one by 10. But otherwise, we're just going to take the number for the score. Uh, starting with Balloon Fight, we're going to be doing some arcadey games. Uh, Balloon Fight's better than Joust, which is the arcade game it's based on, so we're just going to do Balloon Fight as a treat. <laughs> but we got some other games that you've probably seen. We'll see how the players do. You got them ready? Hey, I'm getting everyone I'm, coordinated. I'm ready yeah, to I'm, go. I'm, uh, I'm going to get them started. I'm going to put 10 minutes on the clock. Giving them all the information. So yeah, like you said, uh, 10 minutes per, three games. We've tried to do our best to get the scores so that each game is about evenly weighted. Um, I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. I really wanted to do Balloon Trip, but Smite said no to Balloon Trip because he said it's a bad mode. It just wouldn't work as well, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, uh, I mean, there's, there, so, so high score games always have, like, uh, interesting, uh, point scamming strategies. I think for Balloon Trip, really, it's just going to be all about beating levels for them. I don't think any of our players are going to know enough about how to point scam, and I don't know that this one has any good strategy for it. And then on top of that, like, just beating levels is going to get them access to the bonus stages, which I think is going to give them... A lot more points yeah the bonus level having a perfect score that's where you get most of the points here i'm pretty sure um you probably get points just like in joust if you catch a dude who's falling and you get points for bubbles but i don't think they're much i think clearing the stage is going to be your bread and butter here now they've been told that all we care about is their top score so if they're unhappy with how a run is going or they don't succeed they they can always just pick it back up uh, and if they beat their top score, that's great. If not, that's fine. Uh, we just want to see who has the top score in this amount of time. So it's not its not their last run that matters. It's not that they have to sit on a good run. They can just try as many times as they want to. So on the right, we have a cumulative score that we'll update at the end of each game. I'm going to go ahead and build a clock also that counts down so that we have that instead. That won't take me long. That should be on the UI anyway. You whistling the song? <laughs> I just had a, a bit of it in my head. So, I mean, the rules for this game are very similar to Joust. You know, the winner is going to be the person who has sort of the higher position. Um, the controls can be a little bit tricky until you get comfortable with them. And then once you get comfortable with them, they're still a little bit tricky. Yeah. So right there, we saw Time Stalker get a perfect score on the bonus. Digi Digi didn't quite get a perfect score. That's a 10,000 point swing just for getting a perfect score on the bonus. So it is important that they do their best with that. That's not to say that, you know, getting a perfect score is gonna be the decider because if someone doesn't get quite as far or they unfortunately game over, that's gonna play a much bigger role for them. But uh, getting to those bonus stages and trying to play them as best as possible is going to really make the difference for our players. Joey Gatorman just got a perfect score on the second bonus stage, if I'm not mistaken. That's 15,000 points. This game... now, like we said before, all of our games are somewhat evenly weighted, so if, if for instance, one player gets a really good score on this, uh, that doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to win. Um, they could underperform in a later game. This game doesn't have a ton of stages, so we've seen mostly what we're into. There's just going to be a little bit more lightning later, I think, and that's about it. Yeah. There is a fish in the bottom there that serves as the same purpose as the hand in Joust, where it will grab you. There's no pterodactyl. <laughs> they removed that goofiness. 
Actually, I don't know that it's going to bother the players much. We could have told them there is some finder controls that maybe aren't obvious. Uh, and those are that one button flies in a different manner than the other one. And you can use both at once if you want. You can hold one of the buttons that constantly fly, and the other one's more of a tap. Gotcha. So you can really cruise if you do both, because you can do both. One, And if you are missing one of your two balloons, it makes it a little worse to control, and that is slower too. So that's your punishment for getting hit. Okay, I got the countdown actually counting down from 10 minutes now instead of being up. Oh, nice. That's live tech right there. Yeah. Now we got them both on the screen at all times. Whichever one we decide to use, yeah. Pretty much everyone is on a bonus game right now. That's really funny. The bonus rounds do get... I wouldn't say they get harder, but they do get different. And you will have to scroll the screen style. You want to get all them points. I wonder if the later one... So it seems like the earlier bonus games, this could just be... Uh some bias I saw, but um, seems like the early ones will sometimes shoot multiple balloons at the same pipe many times in a row, and I, I guess maybe later rounds might diversify a little more. Yeah, it's not... If you're good at them, you probably won't struggle too much to get all the balloons on the second or third try of them, but they are different, and I think they do get a little, little more involved with patterns, but they only can do so much because it's always four pipes. Right. And they don't like... Yeah, it's only so difficult to move from one pipe to a different one. They never get faster or anything. It's just, here's the balloons. <laughs> they come out every every second in the, one of these pipes. Joust has a pterodactyl. To kill it, you have to, you have to get the pixel of your spear into its mouth. And it does not line up with you in any fair way. So it's definitely meant to eat your quarters. But if you can do it, you get a lot of points. There's techniques that can make it happen. I, I find that people really suck at Joust for some reason, <laughs> so I always, when I go to an arcade, I always find the Joust machine and get my name on number one, and then I leave. I just play it I once. I think of myself as good at, bal uh, at Balloon Fight, I never felt like I was good at Joust, joust so I do jankier. get that. It's, it's just a mess of a... It's like, it's like Turbo Mode Balloon Fight, and it feels like the AI really wants you dead. Balloon Fight feels like you have a lot more control. Joust, it feels like the only way to really play it effectively is just to plan to always go infinitely in one direction and just move <laughs> up and down. Well, the thing about Joust that this game doesn't actually have, maybe for the better, is different AI. Uh, the AI on new guys gets worse as the game goes on, and if they, like, respawn, you don't kill them, they get upgraded. And one of their AI is to just hang at the top of the screen, and the other AI, the worst one, is to try and assassinate you. Just wild, wild movements. <laughs> just bouncing off the top of the screen, trying real Whatever hard... Whatever it takes. Yeah, trying real hard to confuse and kill you. The regular guy just kind of flies around. And they, they are definitely weak to what you're saying, where you just kind of cruise. The only times I've ever played Joust well, I basically just said, I'm going to fly to the right constantly and move up and down. Great game for versus mode. <laughs> just like this one. When I go to MAGFest panels, I usually make them play this in Versus. You gotta joust their balloons away, but there's these goofuses in the way. You ever played uh, the arcade game uh, Killer Queen? Uh, like the actual yeah. arcade cab? Yeah, that's at MAGFest too. I'll be playing that again. Nice. Of course, we played the uh, online version. Yeah, we played the Switch version. Yeah, that or, version's... Yeah, um, the... the the home port. It's good. I, I like it a lot. Yeah, I much prefer the arcade version. It's very different. Well, different in some ways, at least. I think there was an online mode of some kind that we could play at Pillar Queen still. Probably. Yeah, MacFest um, was way too crowded. I never got to play that. I got to play F-Zero on the other machines, but this last year, Pillar Queen's cabinets were all haunted <laughs> at all times. <laughs> And crowds. It looks worse it's than popular. it is. It's popular. Yeah, it looks worse than it is because it's eight people playing at a time, and there's like if two two technical turns of line are waiting, then that's thirty two people or whatever, right? Like, right. Just sitting there, like twenty four people are just sitting there waiting to go. 
and sometimes they do tournaments and stuff, so at any time, it looks like you're never gonna get to play. But if you bring a crowd of four, uh, you can just wait and get a turn eventually. Definitely got the amusement park line going on, though. We have one minute left, and like I thought, we would see 200k get broken by our leading players in this. 326k currently, Joey is the... Yeah, Joey is crushing this. Leading the Wild bubble. long shot. All of our players have done pretty well. Um, I think only one player is below... A few players are below 100,000, but... Um, you know, it's still anyone's game. The we've got we've got a lot more arcade games to go. Maybe we'll see a big swing in another one. Yeah, I think for a dude, you can go ahead and punch in 96k. They're not going to beat that. Everyone else is still generating their top score at the moment, but they only have 25 seconds left. Yeah, not a lot of time left on the clock. Yeah, you're right. Everyone else is on their best round at the moment. Once you get the hang of this game, you can you can kind of just last and last. You do get a ton of points for killing a dude midair, so that's just like in Joust, if you can grab that. That's probably where a lot of points can come from mid-stage. That's what I'm saying. Time is up. Tell him to stop it off. Alright, I pause the video so that I can get all the scores off of this right now. Uh, so, Time Stalker on mine has 144.050. Got Moonberry up next with 126.500. Joey got interrupted on a perfect bonus round. They will not get those 30k points. Came in too late. At the moment that horn blasted, I paused the video so I could take the top scores off of it. And Joey Gaterman with an astounding score. See how they are at the next game. Completely different. We're going to uh, Galaga next. It's an arcade shooter. All right, let me pass along uh, Galaga to them. I will give them the hints in case they've never played it before. The green enemies with the tractor beams will try to absorb your ship. If you let them do it and then kill that enemy very carefully, you can have an option, basically. You can turn your one-up into a double fighter. Uh, so that... I'm just going to post that whole hint into the chat for them. Go for it. I'll let you do it. I expect if they do not bother doing the doubler on their ship, they will not win this. <laughs> uh, at least not compared to the other players. It, it translates immediately, like, in, in the span of my- it takes a little while to do it, but in the span of 30 seconds they'll have conquered scoreboard big time over people who did not do it. It will go into the bonus round, which is just two enemies side by side, and they'll be able to blast every single one of them. Alright, uh, looks that, like they're all the fired up. Um, I'm ready. I'll watch for that countdown. Yeah, I, I think the bonus rounds actually are impossible to perfect without the double. Alright. I've given them the countdown. We've got all of our players starting. 
10 minutes on the clock. You can murder stages the way that the players are currently doing most of them are anyway. But like I said, if you don't if you don't double up, you are not going to be the leader of this because someone's going to do it. I've never sat down and tried to play Galaga a whole bunch. I I've, I did okay on like a Galaga arcade pit challenge in the past, but um, I feel like I feel like I would not do well in a setting like this trying to play Galaga against you know six other people. Uh, we have three players so far who captured their ship. Now, Moonberry blew their ship up, which is the thing you can do. <laughs> they have murdered it. You can kill the one up. That's why I said the word carefully. And you do lose the one up, like, permanently. It's gone. It turned right. into that option, so... It's a really weird mechanic. Unique to Galaga. It's a bit of a it's risk. A sh it's a strange mechanic. You know, like, get willingly giving up a life to, to increase your score output. Well, you can see what Time Sucker's doing with it. The first player to succeed at it. Look at their board. It murdered. You gotta watch out when these fellas are coming in with the shots. They will blast you while they're coming in. Uh, but yeah. So when you get hit, one of those ships will just disappear. You'll still be rolling. The life is just gone that way. And here's the bonus. It's time for run. a challenging stage. Yeah, yeah, I bet. It's challenging. We free for the bonus here. <laughs> Look at this mess. Too easy. Number of hits, all of them. Moonberry's going for it. Joey Gatorman also got the uh, the doubler. You do get a bigger hitbox, and it gets a little rough. Time Stalker got blasted. They lost their hitbox. Oh um, no! So it's not like free. It's just it's just I don't see you getting a ton of points in this game without doing it. Like Bloom fight. They did get be... the extra life though, which means that they'll have another opportunity to do it. Game's gonna be pretty rough. It's gonna be pretty rough to get a better score in this than Boon Fight, but uh, I think you could if you if you really nailed it. You have to be really careful in this game because the enemies they do a lot of I'm just gonna call them pot shots. Like they just fire these little things off all the time, even when they're coming into the stage. They just drop a pellet randomly almost. So you have to play very defensively. That's the way to do it. To be fair, I'd say that our players did better at Balloon Fight than I would have expected them to do, though. Yeah, they did very well. So that is a very high score. That's probably going to be the score leader on this game number three. Well, game number three is easy. It's just I think they'll be annoyed with it. <laughs> no, they're going to have a great time. We only pick games that they're going to love. Yeah, like Clue Clue Land. The game that I like love. Like Clue Clue Land. I was already warned by our players that if Clue Clue Land showed up in this, that they would be leaving. <laughs> I don't have arcade Kuku Lands. Where's the sequel? Where's it at? You do double your hitbox with that move too. Like you're you're gonna suddenly be in danger when you normally wouldn't be with one ship. So you gotta you gotta be very careful. It's hard to stay alive that way for forever, but um I definitely remember as a kid, the little stage markers on the bottom right. Uh, we see them with Dude already, see how it turned into a 5 to mark 10, or a 7, so that right. they can... I, I remember them turning into all kinds of different symbols, just they found a way to cram a 100 into that little number there. <laughs> like, they just, <laughs> they just turn it blue and upside down and turns into a square. <laughs> and like, they have these little marks, and they can just keep on st staging as much as they want. Turbo mode goes nuts. So it's definitely a game where you can go as long as you feel like. Joey's doing very well in this game as well. But currently not doubled. Also, we see the new enemy type came out. I think that might be pushing it for enemy types. There's not a ton of them, but Joey is dealing with one of the later threats where they split into three fellas. It's not just these... Two. It seems really tough to dodge when your hitbox gets bigger, because it already seems tough to dodge when your hitbox isn't bigger. Yep, this game wasn't designed for you to last forever. You could, if you're really good at it, just like any arcade machine, but they're all meant to stop you. They're all meant yeah, to we're take you Roughly the halfway point, and um, definitely only about a quarter of the number of points that were earned in the previous game, but...
I think Luke Blue Land would be fine if it didn't spin on pegs. That's, a, that's what people have trouble with. It may as well have motion controls for the NES. That's what the people have to deal with. This the They can't wrap their head around that weirdness. I have no intentions of keeping track of what people's best scores are besides the high score sure. uh, marker. So if people get less than 30,000, then they get 30,000. <laughs> Uh, we've only got, yeah, we've got about three players who haven't cracked uh, 30,000 yet. This is one of those games that if you're just not great at this style of game, which I'm not, um, I feel like getting enough points to even get on the board is probably uh, challenging. The devastation if, of shooting yeah. your own ship. Yeah, I could have probably modded the or modified the uh, ROM to remove the thirty thousand baseline. Moonberry has done it. They've been trying for a little while, but they finally done. It. That's got to be exciting. You're finally in the game. With three minutes <laughs> left. You got double shot. Yeah. If they can hold on to it, they could still get a ton of points with this. They're gonna they're gonna get that thirty k right now. I bet because they're gonna get this free bonus round ten k, and they're just gonna suddenly shoot up there. They were one of the first people to try, and I don't think they're super familiar with this game, so they didn't know they could blast their own ship, which is really funny and mean. I think... I don't know the rules exactly. It's not... It's not cut and dry if it captures your ship, just free it and it's yours. Sometimes it turns into an enemy. I don't know why. I think it's if you don't take too long or something. Mm. Oh, they lost it there. They got blasted. But yeah, sometimes you just have to sorrowfully blow up your own red ship, which refuses to come back to you. <laughs> just to take it out to move on in the game. But we try to balance the points. Some of the players are going to have a pretty balanced time. Other players had a lot more trouble with this game. Time Stalker actually might be the point leader here. But Joey's final score is 87 and 750. They're not going to beat that in two minutes. Looks like they're taking a break after that run. We could probably just adjust uh, our scoring measurement if we wanted to. So that they are balanced a little more. You want to double greatest of score? That, that sounds about right. Sure. Just multiply at times too. It's at least fair under the circumstances. I think that might just make it worse. <laughs> Given who won. But it's all good. It's the kind of thing I would do if uh, if my measurement was more accurate. When I, I just ran this game real quick to see what kind of points I got. But um, yeah. Balloon Fight just gives more points out more easily. Time Stalker's got the mark for a 10 on the levels. You see that blue shield? Yeah. I think that's the uh, digi digis there as well, but you can see the score difference there, just because of who's gotten the most bonus round points, I guess. One minute left. I don't think you should double it. I think we should just leave it the way it was. Okay. You got it. I think that's the most fair thing to do, especially since we already started. But all also, I'm seeing the. Big scores and little scores happening here. <laughs> it's just going to be super unfair to double the gap on this game. On Popeye, our next game, by the way, in 30 seconds, we're going to have to take a time spin. What do you know about Popeye, folks? He's strong to the finish. Yeah. Popeye's coming in. He's going to send us off. I'm recording the scores I'm seeing coming in, so until I left. get all of them, they're not going to be exactly right, but... Yeah. Digi Digi's locked in their final score. Time is up. Alright, I paused as of that time.
I will get the scores off of them. Time Stalker with 122,710. Tarragon with 45,420. And Digi Digi at 61,210. Cool. All right. Those scores are now accurate on our end. All right. Mark. Let me pass on our last game. 1982 Popeye. You watch out for the Sea Hag and Brutus. You gotta walk up and down the stairs, back and forth, collect things that drop. Uh, Brutus, not Bluto. Why is his name Brutus? What the? His name changed over the years. I don't remember when or why, but. He went by Brutus in a number of the games, at least. I don't know if that's like a. I don't. I don't know if like it changed for like between the comics and the cartoons or something. Weird copyright situation. Interesting. Our final game of the night, it's Popeye. So you can... Oh, right. The English version is just collecting hearts. In the Japanese version, it's spelling words. You spell words in level two or music notes in level two. This oh, okay. is stage one, you collect hearts. I think you spell words I remember in the there being stage. like something really big different between the English and the Japanese version of this, but I don't remember what. I don't know anything about the Japanese version. But um, we're going to be... Uh, unable to defend ourselves from Brutus, Brutus there, unless you eat the Popeye spinach thing that hops around. You can only get one a stage. Stage one has a barrel you can knock on his head. You can hit his bottles, but that only is a defensive maneuver. And I don't know if killing him is worth the time. Like, it might be. It's 3,000 points, but uh, it pauses the game for a long time. Is the thing. So maybe you want to wait until there's hearts all over the screen to collect before you do that. Uh, that's up to the players, though. Play however they want. I'm ready to go. All right. I'll give them the countdown. Ten more minutes in our session today. Ten minutes on the clock. Digi Digi immediately grabs that stuff. <laughs> He's super easy to catch. He tries to evade. Get out of here! It's hopeless. I think that the play is to eat it when there's actually things to do on the screen, because it does take the whole freaking song into account before you can get out of here. And at least if you have hearts to collect, you can do something with your time. Handy little through sign to ensure you know you can go left or right there. Only on that top floor, though, if I'm not mistaken. Bonus 1,000 for Bucket. Joey's got the points. Nice. You do have to stop the art from dying. Um, this Final Sentinel's got to go grab that one that's... It can't swim. Arts can't swim, it's a known fact. So I assume that Brutus can't go up and down the ladder, only up and down the stairs, or is he only on that middle floor? He can't go up and down the ladder, or any other weird stuff like that. He can jump up and grab you, though, sometimes. Interesting. I never watched them, but one of those goofy versus videos popped up on my feed. One Punch Man versus... <laughs> Popeye who would win. And I sat down and watched that one stupid thing. Popeye! Oh, I don't know whether or not we want to multiply score by 10 in this one. <laughs> uh. 
Maybe. It's been two minutes. I think we want to... It's. I think it's still going to be the lower score one, but maybe Galaga ruined some people's scores. We'll see, I guess. Bloom fight brought in a bunch. Level 2 is probably the most annoying of the stages for uh, movement and um, bonus points. Well, Popeye in some episodes like destroys the universe and stuff, so they're measuring him by his strongest moment or some shit. Like you can, when you're doing that kind of stuff, you can say whatever you want. <laughs> but there's also an episode where Popeye lost to a cat, so I'm like, you know, it's pretty cut and dry to me which one of these the goofy anime character who never loses, or Popeye who wins or loses when it's funny. <laughs> it doesn't really... Uh, to get bonus points on level 2, you have to bounce off the seesaw when the dude... Is that Wimpy? Is that his... It might be the baby. Is that its lowest? What was the baby's name? Sweet Pea? Sweet Pea, that's out. I think you get some, probably a thousand points for doing that there. Uh, in this level, you get points by punching the vulture. What did that vulture ever do to us? I think, um, I mean, on the regular, animals try to fuck with Popeye and get destroyed. Turn into, like, sausages and stuff. So, too bad. Too bad for the bird. Oh man, this, this level looks like the one that you make a killing on, just... punching vultures every time they appear, and they just keep appearing. Yeah, I don't know why the points are worth different amounts. Maybe if you grab them sooner, you get more points? I think that's what it is. I didn't know that. They're getting 500 for the ones up top and 50 for the ones at the bottom. Ridiculous change. That's where the points actually are. I didn't know that, and I see that immediately here. Uh, you want to grab that stuff as high up as you can. You yeah. Get a truckload of points for grabbing the letters when you can get them. It's kind of like the only thing that matters. I <laughs> it's so many points. I feel like you couldn't turn vultures into sausage anyway, because they're probably too lean. There's a lot of different kinds of vultures, too. There's a vulture that only eats bones. Which is pretty sweet. I mean... Yeah? Pluto got the moonberry into the water. Move. Time Stalker's making a killing punch in these skulls. It's up to the players how to get points here. There's probably a lot of scams. I don't suspect that this is perfectly balanced. <laughs> it seems to me, on in retrospect, without knowing the rules in advance, it's been a long time since I played this, getting the hearts and, and letters as high as possible is the main priority, the main thing. Anything else is all icing to that. I'm seeing our top score and still feeling like we're going to need to top 10 this. It's been okay. six minutes. Look at the, uh, I mean, what do you think? I think we should. I mean, if we multiply, it. if we mul multiply the top score we have right now by 10, then this game is more powerful than both Galaga and. I think we should. And double uh, it. balloon fight combined. Let's double that number, whatever it is. Stingy Popeye, not giving no points. Time Stuck is going for the Sweet Pea bonus. 500 for that. I wonder if it also is affected by the height. Oh, 
there's probably a clever math nerd way of of solving this problem, right? Like just scale everyone's points to within the top score for that game. So the top score gets one point and everyone else gets a fraction of a point and then... Math's never solved anything. I know. There's never been a situation where addition or multiplication could solve a problem. I agree. Only makes new problems. Oh, you get 600 points if you're spinached up when you grab the hearts. Oh, like during the spinach you get twice as many points per pickup, maybe? Yeah, that seems like what it might be. That makes me feel like the strategy of waiting until the screen is littered is still the time to grab the spinach. Two minutes left. I don't know if anyone's game overed. I think uh, Joey might have. I think uh, I think we've been really enjoying this format of doing like three games and combining them. So I think I'm gonna come up with a clever way to make my spreadsheet do cool math for us. I remember when I did my last mystery triathlon, and you said you'd send me some games, and I never got that author blues pack. You you asked me for like the last few things to give you some games and I haven't sent you anything. <laughs> it's impossible for me to think about it. Every time SRL used to do their mystery tournament. So the rules for the SRL mystery tournaments was uh, oh. if you wanted to participate, you had oh. to submit two games. Did I you had see the that worst Bluto time. jump? I was distracted by that nonsense. Oh my God. The one from Dude as well. Yeah, on Digi Bluto Digi just pile drived him. He just came crushing down. Sorry to interrupt you. That was just rude as hell. Bluto move. Yeah, picking games is tough. That's why I asked for help. <laughs> I used to have the worst time. Mystery tournament needed you to submit two games minimum if you wanted to participate in the tournament. That used to always be the hardest part for me. Digi Digi has decided to die getting vulture points here <laughs> as the final throw. <laughs> I'm not sure what final sentinels points were before the before he blanked his screen, so it was nine thousand something. I'll ask. Twelve seconds left. The nice thing about these arcade games is the top score being clearly written at all times. Can't get away from knowing that you are not the top score in these arcade machines. Time is up. All right, I've frozen the feed. And we're gonna just double the Popeye score then? Yeah, I think that's good. Let's multiply that. All right, let me go ahead and apply that before I start punching in numbers. All right, so for dude, I have 31, 340. Time Stalker, I have 67, 760. Moonberry, I have 49, 240. Paragon, 37, 90. 39, 410. Ninety-seven fifty, according to Sentinel, and Joey had forty-four seven eighty, and there are our scores. Joey with five hundred seventeen thousand is in top. I'm sucker four hundred two. Tarragon takes third place, three hundred thirty-eight thousand nine hundred. There we go. That's our uh, that's our players. Hey, nice work. That was fun. I like me a mystery mess. Yeah, these have been fun. They've been a nice way to play a little bit of something. I would never, against my worst enemy, assign 30 minutes of Popeye, but it's nice to be able to <laughs> have them play a little bit of these. Yeah, Popeye gets... Um... 
It runs out of stages after three. <laughs> That's how there is. Hey, thanks for joining me, Alta Blues. Thanks to you. Have a good one. You too.